Jesus does not say when these things will take place. But the next word that I have is vigilance. It says that we're to Yo, watch, watch out and we're that, to dude. look. When it begins to come to pass, we're to look up. There should be hope, not fear. Do you like gay people? God loves you. I love you. I love you so much. The free gift of eternal life is in Christ Jesus. A lot of people say, yes, does God love me? And God loves you, but do you love God? This is a Bible prophecy. Be fulfilled as I'm preaching. As long as we respect and love each other, that's all that matters. And that's what God is for. God hates sin. Do you respect God? Do you, do you respect God? Sodom and Gomorrah, bro. Literally, bro. This might be worse, bro. Oh, yes. It's definitely the Bible says it's worse. It's already passed. already exceeded the love we sprayed unfortunately we didn't get it on camera and the cops were right there but they ran away but they just pepper sprayed me in the eyes so now i can't see much 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 later plan that purpose why you were created why were you put on this earth why you were birthed the only re way you can find that out is through the one who created that plan that purpose and i'm here to let you know the one who created each and every one of you his name is jesus christ the bible says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the Bible says that by him, by Jesus, all things were made, and that nothing that was made would have been made without him. So that means each and every one of you was created by Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm here to let you know that we all sinned. The Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that is why we have to repent. And that is why we have to put away the pride, because pride says that I have it all together. But humility says that I've made mistakes and I need a savior. See, pride is the opposite of humility. Pride is of the devil. Humility is of God. And I'm here to let you know that we're not here to condemn you. I'm not here. This is not hate speech. This is love speech. I'm preaching God so loved the world. I'm preaching that God so loved you. The Bible says that God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. And I'm here to let you know that the wrath of God is being stored up. His cup, his cup of wrath is being filled with sin. And it's going to be poured out one day because the Bible says that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Each and every one of us are going to have to give an account for the life that we have lived. And there's a lot of people mocking, and I'm, not, I'm saying this in love, I will advise you to watch what you say because jesus said that you will be judged for every idle word you have spoken every single time you've mocked the preaching of the gospel you're going to have given account for every single time you lived in pride you're going to have to give an account for every time that you lived a, a, a life of rebellion to god you're going to give an account for but i'm here to let you know that there's hope that repentance means there's hope for you repentance doesn't mean we're condemning you the Bible says that God did not send in his son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So I'm not here condemning you. Repentance means that, Lord, I know that my lifestyle is, I'm living is wrong. Lord, I know that my pride is wrong. Lord, I know my homosexuality is wrong. Lord, I know my rebellion is wrong. Lord, I know my sin is wrong. But, Lord, change me. Transform me. You turn, you live a lifestyle turning away from a lifestyle of sin. And that's what God is calling you to do because God is holy. You see, God loves you, but he hates sin. God loves you, but God is holy. He's perfect, he's righteous, and he does not allow sin into his kingdom. The reason why Jesus Christ came down, hallelujah, was to save us 
from hell was to save us from sin. The sake because sin brings death. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And you see the thing about this free gift of Jesus Christ is not a dollar ninety nine. It's not twenty dollars. The gift of Jesus Christ is not fifty dollars. The gift of Jesus Christ is not a hundred dollars. The gift of Jesus Christ is not two hundred dollars. But the free gift of eternal life is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And you know what they're doing? They're mocking the preaching of the gospel. And the Bible says that in the last days there will be mockers and scoffers. So this is just Bible revelation. This is just Bible prophecy being fulfilled as I'm preaching. This is Bible Amen. prophecy fulfilled right before our eyes. Amen. So I'm here to let you know that God loves you, but you have to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That, hallelujah, that me and my brother, we are in the world, but we are not of this world because where this world is going is to the lake of fire. And everybody who is in this world will go with it. But God is calling you to be separate from the world. God is calling you to come out from among them. God is calling you to come out from the world, that we're in the world, but we're not of this world. We are part of the kingdom of God. We are part of the kingdom of God. And I'm going to let you know that surely the, the kingdom, the kingdom of God has come upon you today. And see, the, the good thing, or the, the bad thing for the one who doesn't repent is, once you hear the preaching of the gospel, you have no excuse when you stand before the Lord. God loves you. I love you. I love you so much. God is not gay. I love you so much. I love everybody. I love everybody. Do you like gay people? I love everybody because God died for me and he died for gay people. He died for the homosexual. He died for everybody. I just want to know who's in pussy tonight. The Bible says don't cast your pearls among swine. Yeah. So, hallelujah. I'm here to let you know that, that Jesus loves you. That the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Don't you want to go to heaven? You know, hell, a lot of people nowadays joke about hell like it's just some fun game that you just, you just have pleasure in. But the Bible says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you ever gnashed your teeth? Because that's how hot it's going to be. Hell fire. But see, the good thing about God is we are all worthy of hell. I'm here unto me. I'm putting away my pride. Look, I'm putting away my pride and saying that I am being humble right now and saying I'm worthy of hell because I've sinned. I've fallen short of the glory of God. If I counted up all the things I did in my life and, and, and I try to stand before God and say, look, God, I, I know I did all these sins, but I know I, I, I cursed out my mom. I, I know I cursed out teachers. I know I used to bully people in high school. If I stand before God and say, look, Lord, I did all of that. But hey, I, I gave $20 to a homeless person. It wouldn't work because the Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I'm not here saying I'm perfect. I'm not here saying I'm got it right. I'm not here saying you've got it right. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you that we all don't have it right. But that's why we need Jesus because he had it right. Hallelujah. He had it right. That he lived a life. That he set the standard of how man is supposed to live, that he, had, that he set the standard of how human beings are supposed to live. And I'm here to let you know that you have to follow that standard. You have to follow Jesus Christ because we live in a day and age where a lot of people say they're Christians. A lot of people say they follow Christ. And then when you look at their lifestyle, it does not align with the word of God. In order to be a Christian, Jesus said, unless any man come after me, let him deny himself pick up his cross and Amen. follow me. That's a humility Amen. statement. Self-denial is not pride. Self-denial is humility. I'm going to deny the way that I feel. Lord, I might have certain urges in my body, but Lord, I put, I crucify that urge. I crucify my flesh so Lord that I can please you. Why are you sticking the middle finger up at me? God loves you. It's okay. God loves you. God loves nah, I, love, I love each and every one of you. And Not everyone's I, his children. And, I, and, I, and I'm here to let you know that not everybody is a child of God. Good point. Not everybody is a child of God. You know, Jesus called the Pharisees children of the devil. And these are religious folks in the Bible who thought they were right with God. And Jesus, God himself in flesh, called them the children of the devil. So what that shows is that not everybody is a child of God. 
there's actually people who are children of the devil. But the thing about God is he wants you to be a child of God. That the Bible says that they that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And how do you get the Spirit of God living inside of you? You repent of your sins and you turn to God. The Bible says that unless a man is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. God wants, you, wants to fill you with his Holy Ghost. God wants to fill you with your Holy Spirit. God wants you to be born again. It's, I hear so many excuses, and, and, and I, let, me, let me say that again. I don't want to call it an excuse, but there's a lot of people that feel like they were born gay, and I'm saying this in love. The Bible says you have to be born again. That I'm here to let you know that you don't have to stay that way. That The Bible says to come as you are, but you don't have to stay that way. That the Bible says that he will transform you by the renewing of your mind. That me, the way I was when I first got saved, is nothing compared to how I am now because God changed me, God transformed me. And the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. So the same way that God changed me, the same way God transformed me, he can change you and transform you as well. But you have to put away the pride. You see, pride is what got Satan cast out of heaven. You see, Satan was an angel, but he wanted to be like God. That's pride. And he was cast out of heaven. The, Jesus said that I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. He was cast out of heaven because of pride. And I'm here to let you know that we love you, but God hates pride. The Bible says that there's six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to God. And the first one the Bible says is pride because pride separates you from God. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. I am prideful of God. But pride, true pride, is, is feeling that, like you have nothing wrong. True pride. True pride. No, that's not pride. That's not pride. Because in order for me to be prideful from God, I have to be humble to myself. I have to live in humility. That's the difference. Hallelujah. God bless you. But I'm here to preach the truth in the gospel. You want to say something? Yeah. I'll You know, some people might take in this. So, um, my name is Camilla. I come from Cuba, right? Cuba? Okay. Okay. So, over there, we follow different traditions. I believe that science, spirituality, religion, we all go hand in hand as long as we respect each other. Okay? okay. So that's all you want to say? As long as we respect and love each other, that's all that matters. And that's what God is for. Amen. But God God hates sin. Do you respect God? Do you, do you respect God? Because at the end of the day, living in sin is not respecting God. Because the Bible... Wait, let me speak. I'll let you speak. I'll let you speak. I'll let you speak. I'm not, I'm not trying to condemn you. I'll let you speak. I'm next. But let me just... Let me, let me just get my point across. She, she made a good point. She said... Well, not really a good point, but she said, with all due respect, she said, you know, we should... All spirituality and religion, all tradition, we're all right if we respect each other. And I respect you. That's what I'm giving you in the gospel. But at the same time, do you respect God? Because walking around butt naked is not respecting God. Walking around perverting the minds of children, hold on, I'll give it back to you, is not respecting God. Do you, a lot of people say, yes, does God love me? And God loves you, but do you love God? Because Jesus said, if you love him, you will keep his commandments. That love is not just something you say with your mouth. It's something you say with your actions. It's something you say with your lifestyle. So, amen, I respect you. And you may respect me. I don't know, I don't know if you like me, you love me, you hate me. I love you. But do you respect God? Because the Bible says that earth is the Lord's. That everywhere. The yo, watch out, that Lord's. dude. Yo, watch out on that dude. That the earth is Check the out. Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The Bible says that earth is yeah, the Lord's that's... footstool. So, hallelujah. Do you respect God? Uh, God loves you, but do you love God? And I'll say it again. If you love the Lord, Jesus said that you will keep his commandments. I love each and every one of you. You see, this is the Holy Spirit because I know a couple years ago, I used to be shy. A couple years ago, I used to be anxious. A couple years ago, I wouldn't have said any of this because I was lost, I was blind, and I was living in sin, and sin brings shame. But God changed me. God changed my brothers. He transformed me. And I love you, and I want the same transforming power that is living inside of me, that greater is he, the Holy Spirit, that lives in me than he that is in the world. The same spirit that rose Christ from the dead lives inside of me and my brothers. I'm here to let you know that the Holy Spirit wants to live inside each and every one of you. But in order for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God, 
to live inside of you. You have to repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand.